it's just so, like, as we've established, if I, I probably don't have to tell you, you probably already know, it is uh, a new a new week. Um, mother's Day was yesterday. If you have your mother in your life, I hope you had a, a good Mother's Day. Uh, I relented. My mother was just on me to go to church with her. So I relented. She took me to this Jamaican pilgrim church. And it was uh, awesome. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So uh, I hope you had a chance to spend time with your mom. I also listened to Robert Johnson records yesterday. would have been his 100th birthday. Legendary blues man and really the first rock and roller. Legend has it, poisoned to death by a jealous husband. Themes of the blues, poverty, betrayal, and redemption. And those themes run through the life of this next woman. Shania Twain is on her way into the studio. Here's her bio. In the history of country music, perhaps no artist has changed the game as drastically as Shania Twain. Long before Taylor Swift or Carrie Underwood, it was Shania who bared her midriff, straddled the world of pop and country, and became the biggest female country artist of all time. Timmins, Ontario, uh, Shania's family struggled to put food on the table, but there was always music, and at eight years old, she was performing in bars. Here's Miss Ellie Twain, come on, At 14, she was on the great Tommy Hunter show. And then at 22, things went horribly wrong, and it was tragedy. Shania's parents were killed in a car crash, and she was left to raise her younger siblings. Eventually, she set her sights on Nashville, and in 1993 hooked up with producer Mutt Lang, who had a string of hits with Brian Adams and Def Leppard. Six months later, they were married, and they made music history. Shania's album, The Woman in Me, sold 18 million copies, and her follow-up, Come On Over, was the most successful album ever by a female artist, and the top-selling country record of all time. But at the top of her game, things changed for her. She left the spotlight in 2008, her and her husband divorced, but she didn't stay away for long. She's back, remarried, her own show on the Oprah Winfrey Network, and a new autobiography called From This Moment On. It recounts her difficult childhood, the betrayal that ended her marriage, and the events that made her who she is. see me but they were you know they were happy no not really no, they're all here to see you uh thanks for coming to the house oh thanks. great great yeah. you what uh, this is an interesting place for you to be because to get out there and talk about a record a tour whatever is one thing but to get out here and talk about a book as well where you really laid it out a lot of really personal information there yeah. how's that process been for you well, I'll tell you the difference between doing this and promoting music or, or anything professional. This is not about entertainment. It's about, I'm an entertainer sharing my life. Um, and it's not really, it, it's totally out of my comfort zone. It's not something I do while I'm an entertainer, if you know what I'm saying. It's, sure. it's, it's almost uh, like, like two lives. separate lives. Yeah, because yeah, there was no, um, you know, in your story there was almost no middle ground. It was, yeah. it was... You, you had done a really good job of being separate. It's to a point where you were almost, it appeared, reclusive. Well, and it was. It was too reclusive. You know, the, the problem for me, I think, other than the fact that my life has just been very dynamic and dramatic and, and, and traumatic in a lot of ways, or extreme maybe is the word that sums it all up, but um, I, did, I have had to isolate myself, you know, from very young childhood, just having a difficult childhood. Well, when people read your book, you're going to find it just how difficult it was yeah. uh, in certain points. Yeah. You, you talk about your family, you talk about your father, it's an mm -hmm. abusive situation, it's yeah. difficult. Um, and you said you didn't know it was the norm. When did you realize that something was wrong in your family? Uh, you know, because it started so young. I think really more school brought it to my attention because I had to start lying at school. And, you know, uh, answering why I didn't have a winter coat, uh, why I didn't have a lunch, and I would make up excuses. And you, then you, you just get very, very good at hiding things. Um, when I was younger, I'm not so sure I really understood. I was more confused than anything. Uh, and I think it was more when I started going to school that I really understood there was, some, there was something, uh, you know, almost, I felt a responsibility to keep it quiet and to myself. And, and then you learn this as a habit, you get very skilled at this. And I took this all the way through my life to now. 
and I, I, it's very dangerous to do. It's manifested, you know, in me through my voice. I've, I've got a real problem with that. I have a problem getting volume out. I really have to work it. I've got a long road of, of therapy ahead of me, as far as um, you know, rehabilitation. Yeah, you have a condition in your voice, right? A dysphonia. condition, yeah, dysphonia, yeah. which develops um, uh, very much because of that. Just learning to. I mean, there's various reasons. Um, boxers get dysphonia, for example. You know, it's a damage that you do to the muscles around yeah, the like, legs. Singer's pretty tough, so maybe it's like a boxer, right? Well, I can tell yeah. you. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't work very well when you're a singer. <laughs> you know, to have 